Okay, now we're going to talk about something called concavity, and then we'll get on to the second derivative test. The definition of concavity is the following. Let f be differentiable on an open interval i. The graph is concave upward on that interval if the derivative is an increasing function of on, on the interval. So a graph is concave upward if its derivative is increasing. And it's concave downward if the derivative is decreasing. Now we need to think about this just for a minute. For the derivative to be increasing, that means that those tangent lines must be getting larger. And for the derivative to be decreasing means those tangent lines must be getting smaller. And those slopes is what I'm talking about, the slopes of the tangent lines. Okay, so let's look at concave upward. Okay, concave upward, basically, what I tell students is the graph is trying to turn counterclockwise. Okay, like this, this graph here. Okay, this graph is trying to turn counterclockwise as you go left to right. But what I want you to notice is each one of these dashes represents the slope of the tangent line. So notice here the slope of the tangent lines are negative. And then over here the slopes of the tangent lines are positive. But then up here the slopes of the tangent lines are even more positive. So the slopes of the tangent lines are, de are increasing. So when the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing on an interval, then that's the same thing as saying that the derivative of the function is increasing on the interval. I'll say it again. When the slopes of the tangent lines are increasing on an interval, then the derivative of the function is increasing on an interval. And when that happens, you have upward concavity. Now, if you look at downward concavity, here this graph is trying to bend clockwise. But if you look at it, here the slope of the tangent line is negative. Here it's more negative. Over here it's really negative. And here it's even getting steeper negative. So in other words, the, here the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing. So the slopes of the tangent lines are decreasing, which means the derivative is decreasing. So the derivative here is a decreasing function, and so the function itself is concave down. So that's what we're saying up here when we say the derivative is increasing or derivative is decreasing. Here, the derivative is decreasing, and so we have concave downward activity. And here, the derivative is increasing, so we have concave upward activity. All right. Now, visually, uh, it's concave upward. Like I said, if it's concave upward here, it's kind of trying to turn counterclockwise, where concave downward is trying to turn is trying to turn in a clockwise fashion. Okay. Now, concavity. Actually, when we discuss concavity, we're talking about the curvature of a graph. So concave upward implies that the graph is attempting to curve upwards, and concave downward implies the graph is attempting to curve downward. The definition of concavity states that the derivative of f is increasing or decreasing, not f itself. And a note here, whether the function is increasing or decreasing is not related to concavity. You can have uh, increasing functions that are concave up or down, or decreasing functions concave up or down. See, this function is decreasing. Okay? So this function is decreasing. Now, what that means is that means the derivative is negative all the way from here to here. But since it's concave down, the derivative is also decreasing, okay, because it's concave down. So 
the function's decreasing, but so is the derivative decreasing. I know the derivative's decreasing because I can see it's concave down. Now here the derivative is increasing, or decre I'm sorry, here the, here the function is decreasing, so the derivative is negative. But the derivative might be negative, but as you go left to right, I, I know that the derivative is increasing because it's concave up. So concave up means the derivative is increasing. Here the graph is increasing, but the derivative is, is uh, decreasing because it's concave down. Here the graph is increasing, and the derivative is increasing, and I know that because it's concave up. So if you look at some graphs, some graphs you can easily determine where the concavity changes. See, this graph is turning clockwise till you get about right here. And then it starts turning counterclockwise. So there's a change in concavity right in here. So here, this graph I would say is concave down from negative infinity to say maybe 1, and then concave up from 1 to infinity. Now, this graph is turning counterclockwise uh, till you get to zero here. And then when you get to zero, it starts turning clockwise. So at the point zero, this graph is changing concavity. It's going from concave up to concave down. It's switching at this point zero, zero. And then here's another one. It's concave up. I'm not tracing, doing a good job tracing, am I? But it's concave up here, and then here uh, it's concave down. Okay, so, so it's concave up, and then at zero it switches concave down. But somewhere in here, actually I know it's, at, it's like right here at one. So at one it switches back to concave up. So, so you've got concave up, concave down, concave up. Okay, so anyway, we'll learn how to determine where those, uh, where a graph is concave up and down by using a test for concavity. Now, I, I, the test is actually easier than probably trying to understand it, but I try to help you understand it here. Let, let, look at it this way. When a function is concave up, it, that means its derivative is increasing. Well, if the derivative is increasing, then the derivative's derivative um, must be positive. Now, you have to go back and think. So, remember this. If a function is increasing, so the derivative is increasing. See, we know it's concave up, so we know the derivative must be increasing because of the definition. So, if the derivative is increasing, then the derivative of the derivative must be positive. But what's the derivative of the derivative? It's the second derivative must be positive. So basically putting it all together, if the second derivative is positive, then f of x must be concave upward. And then you can say a similar argument for concave downward. If the function is concave downward, then the derivative is decreasing. And if the derivative is decreasing, then its derivative, the second derivative, must be negative. So if the second derivative is negative, then the function must be concave downward. So to test for concavity, you just check the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive over an interval, then the graph is concave upward. If the second derivative is negative over an interval, then the graph is concave downward. So to test for concavity, we just kind of do it a similar way we did for increasing, decreasing, but we're, not, we're using the second derivative. So what we want to do is find all points that make the second derivative zero or undefined, and then we'll use those numbers to set up test intervals, and then we will test the sign of the second derivative in each interval. If the second derivative is positive, we know the graph is concave up. If the second derivative is negative, we know the graph is concave down. Okay, let's just get to it. Okay, so here is the function. x to the fourth minus 6x squared. 
I get the first derivative because I can't get the second derivative unless I get the first derivative. So I get the first derivative, then I get the second derivative, then I, I find out when is this second derivative equal to zero. Well, this is the second derivative, and if you solve this, you'll find that the second derivative equals zero only when x is negative one or one. Okay, so basically I'm going to investigate the second derivative um, what's happening around negative 1 and 1. So now I pick a test number like I did before. I, I want a number less than negative 1, so that would be negative 2. So I'm going to choose negative 2. If you plug negative 2 into the second derivative, let's check its sign. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. 3 times 12 is positive. So the second derivative is positive. Second derivative is what I'm testing here. So the second derivative is positive on this interval. Therefore, the graph of f is concave up on that interval. Now, let's check between negative 1 and 1. Let's use 0. Plug 0 into the second derivative, and you get 12 times negative 1. Well, that's negative. The second derivative is negative, so therefore the graph is concave down on that interval. And then the other interval from 1 to infinity I'm going to test the number 2, and then if I plug 2 in, I get a positive second derivative. So the second derivative is positive, so the graph is concave up on that interval. So, and so summarizing, the graph is concave down on negative 1 to 1, and concave up on negative infinity to negative 1, and the interval 1 to infinity. Okay, here's another one. Um, this one, when I got the second derivative, it was just a linear function. So when I set this equal to zero, I actually only got one uh, value that makes it zero at negative two-thirds. So I'm going to break the x-axis up at negative two-thirds, and then I'm going to test the second derivative on each side of that. So I pick a number to the left of negative two-thirds, like negative one, if I plug negative 1 into the second derivative, I get 24 minus 16, which is positive. So the second derivative at negative 1 is positive, so the graph must be concave up in that interval. And then pick a number to the right of negative 3, like 0, and plug that in. If I plug 0 into the second derivative, I get, I get a negative number, negative 16. So the second derivative is negative to the right of negative 2 thirds. So to the right of negative 2 thirds, the graph is concave down. So it's concave down from negative two-thirds to infinity, and it's concave up from negative infinity to negative two-thirds. And so that's how we uh, test for concavity. There's a couple more here. I'm going to kind of speed up a little bit. Y equal x cubed, the second derivative would be 6x. So 6x would be 0 at 0. So I'm going to break it at 0. And then if you test a number to the left of 0, the second derivative is actually negative to the left of 0. And then if you check it to the right of 0, test number to the right of 0, and plug it into the second derivative, it's positive. So to the left of 0, uh, the graph's concave down. To the right of 0, the graph's concave up. So concave down on negative infinity to 0, and concave up on 0 to infinity. Um, this function, the second derivative, is 2, which is always positive. So this graph is always concave up since the second derivative is always positive. And um, go ahead and freeze the video and you can check this one here. And you can check this one. Um, if you get the second derivative, you actually will see that you don't get any points to check for concavity uh, change. You don't get any points that make the derivative zero. Now, you do, you do check it at the vertical asymptote, because you kind of want to know what's happening on each side of the vertical asymptote. So there, um, I checked at, at 1 was the vertical asymptote. To the left of 1, I found the derivative negative. To the right of 1, I found the, derivative, the second derivative positive. So it's concave down to the left of 1 and concave up to the right of 1. Okay. And then freeze the video and just read the next example, and I'm going to do the next video on points of inflection.